All right. We're so glad you're here today for uh, lessons seven and eight today on discipleship. We will be talking about God's healing and about God's filling with the Holy Spirit. Those two things go together. Uh, when we think of the gift of the Holy Spirit, our healing, we think of the Holy Spirit. And our lesson, in fact, for today, uh, in the earlier service from the book of James, it tells us about praying for the Holy Spirit anointing with oil for healing for people. Uh, but ultimately, when we talk about healing, we are talking about God's not just physical curing of our things going wrong with our bodies. A person can have cancer. And they get cured, but 10 years down the road, they're still going to die anyway, right? That's not a healing. That's a curing from cancer for a time. It's a temporary reprieve. The healing that God wants to do in our life is something bigger. Because you and all you watching at home, we are eternal beings. We're created to be re what? resurrected beings. We're not eternal. We have a beginning. <clears throat> we have an end and then we're resurrected to be with God. <clears throat> so what that means in that resurrected life, uh, that's where the true healing and the power of God begins, as well as healing in our relationships. So let's take a look at this with the very first word from the book of Hebrews. Um, the apostle writes, Therefore we must pay greater attention to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away from it, for if the message declared through angels is valid, and every transgression or disobedience received a just penalty, how can we escape so great, or if we neglect so great a salvation? For it was declared at first through our Lord, and it was attested to us by those who heard him, while God added to his testimony by signs and wonders and various miracles and by the gift of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. So what do we hear from that lesson is that God is the one who has the power to create and the power to reconcile our relationship with God. The word reconciliation sounds like such a churchy word, but that simply means that may, what if you and I, Dawn, had a bad relationship because I hurt you, you would forgive me then we have a good relationship again. That's what reconciliation is, okay? So reconciliation is that bringing together, it's all about relationships. That is the healing that God wants to bring in our lives. It's not about curing us from cancer. It's about healing our relationship with God and with each other. Because I have a relationship with God, now I can risk and have a relationship with other people. So that's what God's healing is about. So there's an already sense to that healing. God has already begun to reconcile those relationships with God and with each other. But there's a finality to that uh, relationship with God when we die and are ultimately resurrected on that last day. Okay? So through healing, <clears throat> God brings us into relationship with each other. Hey, Johnny, do you have a key to the church, by the way? Um, if you don't, can you unlock that door? There are people coming, I know. Here, so I have a key right here. Um, if you yeah, don't have it. I really don't have it. Hold on. All right. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, do you know how to unlock that door? Or do I need to pause our lesson? <laughs> okay. So there is relationship and healing right now. Because what Jesus has done... But the true healing, the complete healing, comes when we are reunited with God and all of our loved ones in the kingdom of heaven. Okay? One of the things that we do remind you of is we mentioned about uh, healing the body, curing of the body. And we wonder why we don't always receive the curing of the body that God wants. And again, just as we mentioned at the beginning in the introduction, because that's not God's full purpose. If God cures our body of cancer, we still are going to die. The ultimate purpose is that we be reunited with Him and have a relationship with Him, and that's the important thing. So we have, you know, we look at our life, our life is bound by birth and by death, and this is all we have, right? That's all we can vision and all we can see. 
But God sees a bigger plan for us. God sees us with him in eternity. So that's always God's frame of reference. So even when we're cured of cancers and those types of diseases, we will still face death. But at some point, we'll be reunited with God. But now the question becomes, does God cure us from physical ailments? Because we're already talking about what the true healing that God wants to bring, which is relationship with him and salvation. But does God cure us? So I'm going to ask you, have you ever known anybody who's been cured of something that looked like it might kill them? And all we can say is it must be the hand of God, right? And I believe that. I've seen people cured of cancer. I saw an atheist. Think about that a minute. He was told he had six weeks left to live. Unless he went through some radical chemotherapy and radiation treatment, he might get six months. And he said, why would I want to do that? Because they also would have to remove his larynx because the cancer was there. He said, I wouldn't be able to talk to my family. It would be a miserable six months. I may as well just go ahead and die early. I can't blame him. So this atheist, I told him, his name was Don as well, believe it or not. I said to him, look, Dick, I'm sorry, his name was Dick, not Don. But I said to Dick, would you be willing to have me pray for you? Well, why not? It can't hurt. <laughs> He's an atheist, but he doesn't care. Sure, go ahead. If it works, it works. So I prayed with him, and I just prayed that God blesses him and prosper his journey, that he might know that God loves him. An hour later, I get back to my house. Dick is calling me. I said, what's the matter? He said, the doctors just came in and said the cancer looks like it's gone. He, I said, I didn't know what to do. It was even a surprise to me. And I believe that God can cure people of these things. And I, all I could say was, Dick, well, what do you believe about God now? And he says, I don't know, but whatever you're doing, keep up the good work. <laughs> I said, Dick, whatever it is, it had nothing to do with me. Dick had 10 years of life after that. Still did not believe in God. Isn't that amazing? until the second time he was on his deathbed. And I said to him, Dick, what is keeping you from believing in God and, and knowing that God loves you? He said, I have a problem with all these churches that want to tell everybody what to do, what to believe, and you got to do this, do this, do this, or God's going to hate you and you're going to hell. I said, well, then you've been told the wrong message, my friend. The Bible is about how God loves you, and all God wants from you is a relationship. You don't have a list of requirements you have to fulfill to get to heaven. God just wants to love you. So guess what? Dick looked at me and he said, I think I can believe that. He died within about two hours of that. And so I always tell people, what was the real healing that took place? wasn't the cure of cancer. That's nothing. It's the healing of that relationship with God. And it took him 10 years. But isn't God faithful and good and kind, right? Right. So that is what healing is. Healing is God restoring relationship with us. But we also have this thing of the Holy Spirit. To come into relationship with God takes God working through the Holy Spirit, which is our second chapter for today. And I'm just telling you, we're not in our, I'm not doing worship right now. This is our new member class right now, just so you I know. I just read that. I'm sorry. You owe me never. You never owe me an apology. You know that, right? So I'm just telling you, we're not yet in worship. So uh, you get two sermons for today. <laughs> All right. So being filled with the Holy Spirit, people are watching online are just like, what is going on here? I don't get it. We've got chaos. That's what goes on before the services. All right. So the Spirit of God is the one that brings us to relationship with God.
and the one that brings cure of cancer in our life when we have that, or inspires us in those times where we are challenged or going through difficult times. So I want you to be aware of what the gift of the Holy Spirit is. You may or may not know it, but you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. When you talk about God inside of you and in your heart, we are talking about the Holy Spirit. God gives us a portion of himself so that we know that we are never alone, that we have the strength to get through this life and all the tools that we need to continue in our walk with God. So I want to make sure that you know that you have the Holy Spirit and who that Spirit is. We first are introduced to the Holy Spirit in the book of Genesis chapter 1, where it talks about this Holy Spirit being present in creation. That the Spirit of God moved over the earth. So the Spirit is that creative force of God. It's more than a force, but it is that creative force of, from God that can create life out of the molecules of the universe. That's who the Spirit is. The Spirit is an artist, okay, and is gifted to artists and leaders in the Old Testament and, give the, and prophets to give them the power to be able to do the job that they need, but... That was only in the Old Testament. It was for a limited group of people who received the Spirit for a short period of time. Moses received the Spirit of God. Isaiah received the Spirit of God. Artists received the Spirit of God, but only for a short time to accomplish a specific task. But, because of Jesus Christ, everyone who believes in Jesus has the gift of the Holy Spirit now everyone. So uh, because we have the Spirit, we need to understand what the Spirit does for us. It is a gift of God that nourishes us and brings us into a deeper relationship with God. So when Jesus, when, uh, Jesus is talking to Nicodemus, do you remember the story of Nicodemus uh, at coming to meet him? He's a religious leader who came to meet Jesus in the middle of the night and wanted to know what he had to do to be saved. And Jesus says to him, truly I tell you, no one can enter into the kingdom of heaven without being born of water in the Spirit. Or he ends up using this other really unique phrase, being born from above or born again. What does that mean? It means that the power to have a relationship with God, that's what we're talking about, right? Comes from above. You don't do it by your works of kindness or acts of generosity, it is a free gift of God because he loves you. Just like you had no choice about being born the first time, that was a gift your parents gave you. Our second birth is not really our choice either. It's a gift given to us by Jesus through the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so we are given the Holy Spirit so that we might be born again spiritual life and relationship with God. And this spirit helps us grow into the image of the Father and will unite us as Christians. So, uh, and, and blesses us with unique spiritual gifts. Are you familiar with spiritual gifts? Is that phrase familiar to you? In the Bible, <clears throat> and for those of you who are following along uh, online, if you go to our Facebook page, you will notice that there are we actually give you a handout that contains more details of what I'm talking about in our Bible story for today. But at the end of it, it tells you all the different spiritual gifts that God gives to people who believe in Jesus Christ. And those spiritual gifts are just this wondrous uh, um, cornucopia of gifts that God brings together in the church that we use to bless people and bless the world. And so... You have, so these gifts are things like wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, miraculous power, prophecy, discernment, tongues, interpretations, apostles, apostleship, teacher, helper, administrator, evangelist, pastor, people with helps of encouragement, of gifts of giving, 
leadership and mercy, hospitality and speaking. You have some of those gifts. I know you have gifts of helps. What I mean by that is you're, you're good with your hands. You need to understand that those gifts of hands and working with your hands are the gift that the Spirit gives you so that you can bless other people. You don't have to be a pastor. Sometimes the people who bless people the most are the people with those gifts of helps. The people who clean dishes, clean the toilets. I tell people who, we have a person in our church who's a janitor. I tell him, and I mean this sincerely, that is the holiest job on the planet Earth. He's like, what? I said, you clean toilets for a living so that we don't get sick. You keep us healthy. That is a holy task. When you do electric work or plumbing or work with your hands, when you build something for somebody, you are protecting them from the elements. You are giving them electricity. So that they, whatever, you know, whatever work you do with your hands, we are blessing people with heat and warmth and a house. These are holy tasks. God has given us, the church, a variety of gifts so that we can bless this world and make sure that they know God loves them. You know why? This kind of loses us back to beginning. What's God's purpose again? Healing. What does that mean? Bringing us into relationship with God and with each other. So now you are God's handiwork that is called to use your gifts in concert with the church of God that we might be a blessing. So I'm going to finish with a story how this works. We used to have, we don't right now, but we used to have a really big after school program at our church. And that was really interesting. We had it for maybe 15 to 20 years. It was a great program, but the Willow Hills High School started a program and it just became superfluous. It was no longer needed. But we held down the fort until Woodland Hills started that. But we had anywhere from 10 to 50 kids every single day in this building, and we would teach them how to read and write and give them skills and help them with their homework. We'd feed them every day, and we'd do uh, uh, fun activities with them. And, but when we were starting this, it was a little bit of a chaotic thing, because we had maybe 20, 30 people planning for how we were going to do this. And you had people who said, we need to build a structure so that we can continue funding this and bring in funding and a structure that, uh, a legal structure for all this. Now there are some people who are like, oh, I don't want to talk about that stuff. I want to know how to get my hands dirty. I want to know about the programs that we're going to be doing with the kids. And the people who are the structure folks said, but you can't get to that until you do the structure. And the other folks said, let's just get out here and work with these kids. And there are other people who said, well, I got money. I just want to give money. How do I give money? The structure people were like, you can't give money until we know how it's going to be used. And these other folks were like, we just want to go buy books and do this. Chaos, right? Until we looked at each other and said, but wait a minute. We need all of these things, don't we? Yes, the people who create structures annoy the living daylights out of people who just like to work with their hands and get things going. But those folks are a real blessing. They provide that legal coverage, the structure that's necessary so that those folks can operate. And so once we realized that, we started to appreciate God gave us different gifts so that we could create this program. And it was a very successful program for 20 years because of all of those people. That's what the Spirit of God does. And oh, guess what? Because of that, there are people who have a relationship with Christ because of the work of the church and because we brought together those gifts. That's how the Spirit of God works. So I believe that God has called you to be a part of 
the community of Christ called the church so that you can use your giftedness from the Holy Spirit to help be a blessing to reconcile the world to Jesus Christ. Let's pray, and then guess what? I'm kicking you out of here. <laughs> because I like you. I'm just kidding. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day, for the blessing of relationship with Christ and the gifts that you give us through the Holy Spirit. So we might have a relationship with you and each other, and that we might bring our gifts together to be a blessing to the world. For we give you thanks for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, go in peace, everybody. In the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit. Amen. Take care. All right. My pleasure.